the lows and the heights of writing daily or on growing up as a writer. There is no such thing as trouble with writing because you grow, you grow with each poem you write. But the poems have to be real. They have to be authentic and honest. If you were to use neural networks to generate your poems, you would quickly get nowhere and bored and become defeated with a false sense of triumph. And you would give up. It is similar with art when all people do is just sit there and trace. There is nothing there to move them. The process becomes a boring job, an exhausting job. That is why tracing is just the first step into art. For one, it's not always true that real life has colors that are more beautiful. Iridescence should be everywhere. And yet, and cruelly so, in real life, it is rare. And like in poetry, but here, more illustrated, each new painting teaches you more about the art of art, makes you a better artist. Likewise, each poem makes you a better poet. Here, Bukowski is a good example. He wrote only four out of seven days. What have we lost? What will we never learn? And the heights, the heights that were permanently lost. To be fair, I will read Bukowski book by book on my 100th birthday as I am crossing the Appalachian Trail in winter, not barefoot. Whatever you do, you must write every day because it is not just the poems that are lost but the heights, the heights you could have reached had you wrote. If you look at it from an outside perspective, you don't have writer blocks. It is just that the poems that come your way on that day feel wrong somehow. Possibly, if you are in touch with yourself, they feel outdated. For one, I wanted to write about Markov chains and artificial neural networks today. But it just didn't seem right. I outgrew plain writing. Now I need a series of programs to get me to the final version and the ending of the poem. I need to test the neural layer arrangements. I need to make it work before I write about it. And what I want is to use Brain.js to create a nifty Tone.js beat sequencer melodies. Not just the patterns, but neat little melodies. But since I haven't written those programs yet, it does not really feel right to write about ANNs. Another example. For the past week, I've been thinking about a poem explaining culture. But it is exhausting. And it talks about layers, some broader than the others, all stacked one on top of the other. 
the ending was going to be about me asking you to imagine arriving in a city, a city of the future. Advanced propulsion, no poverty, universal income, real schools and universities, open borders everywhere, peace and wisdom. Now you understand what it is like to live in a crappy country where you are left behind on times. It feels like things were stolen from you, that invisible leeches were taking your life force, that poverty only existed to create crime and crime was meant to make you feel scared. But writing like this is too much for me. It's too much. It's crushing. Bukowski, Bukowski, he would have done it. But also Zizek and Hitchens could really plow right through all this and with class. But to me, it is too crushing. When I finish poems like that, I often say, this is exhausting. And sometimes my voice trembles. I wouldn't want to catch that on audio, that's for sure. To lighten up the mood, a poem is a piece of wisdom well wrapped, just like a piece of cheese is a piece of cheese. A stupid poem is like an umbrella. When it is raining, cats and cats. Ugh. The heavy poems are like steamrollers. They're just too heavy. You don't want to mess with them too much. I think most of us have a penchant for conspiracy theories, and that is my next example. Just today, I started writing about one, just to see how it would go. And I felt like I was wasting my reader's time. I think it is a nice little thing, but it's not good enough to share. Here. If a company was to intercept all your emails, capture all the news articles that you read, which would require that they owned the biggest website visitor analysis service. And if they could plug all that into the input port of a neural network and then take all your behavior and plug it into the output, your behavior being sentiment analysis, your geographic location and movement from the map you used, then you could create a neural network that would present you with things in order to influence your behavior. Because it would know, in its noisy way, how you normally react. It could then fabricate a path to get you to behave in a certain way. Kind of like creating a patsy by indoctrinating him into some fantasy where some head of state is terrible. And then they are the best operative that the nation has. Then. They are the only one that can stop that war or whatever disaster they are indoctrinated into believing. But see, I don't like any of this. It's too much fantasy. I don't like sharing stupid conspiracy theories. They always seem like a waste of time. They're not creative enough. That reality weights them down. And then I try to underline this fact that I recently wrote about, that you need to put a checkbox in your profile for the things that you believe in, 
and not just vote on a politician that has all the boxes pre-selected for you because you deserve better. But this too is too hypothetical. It's fixed in the air. It has no legs that it could stand with. Finally, when a poem does come to you, but you don't feel right about it, you won't be able to make an ending. You won't be able to conclude all the thoughts in the poem. Now, this can be good once every blue moon, but not all the time. Which brings us to the concluding statement of this poem. Be it a piece of cheese or a steamroller, a poem is just as much for your readers as it is for you, the author. A poem helps both sides rise. That is why it is not just about the poems that Bukowski didn't write, but it is also about the height, the height that he did not reach. Writing, be it stories or poems, is a form of rising above yourself. It is a form of transcending your own limits. If you find yourself rejecting multiple ideas throughout the day, that is not a writer's block. How could it be? That just means you rose above yourself and you are asking yourself for more. It means writing is working the way it should, both for your audience and certainly you. Good writing, like good art, is about changing lives.